están cobrando los pacientes y la medicina que ellos estaban viendo a mi seguro. Con el seguro, con el seguro tuyo, con el seguro tuyo. Sí, con el seguro mío. Y cada, sí, cada, cada cita son como 300 dólares. Ellos lo hacen, pero no, no, no quiero hacer eso, porque no es cristiano. Sí. Entonces, eh, ellos eh, estaban haciendo eso, entonces yo... Como sé que eso es ilegal y aquí le dan cinco años de cárcel por hacer eso a una persona, al que lo hace y al que sabe que la persona lo está haciendo y no reporta eso, también le meten cinco años de cárcel. Entonces yo reporté eso al seguro de mami y le dije, mira, yo no tengo que ver nada con eso. Esta persona, eh, una señora una tal Carol, eh, Carol Porsche, que está en esta oficina médica, está cometiendo seguro de fraude. Pero nosotras no tenemos nada que ver con eso. Y nosotras reportamos a la clínica por eh, cometer el seguro de fraude y también por can cancelarle dos citas a mami. Eh, y mami eh, tenía, se vio con el doctor primero y el doctor no hizo un seguimiento porque el doctor le dio antibióticos para una infección. Y el doctor eh, tenía que, eh, cuando determinaran los antibióticos, tenía que dar otra cita para hacer un seguimiento. Y ella, esa, la doctora no lo hizo. Entonces, nosotros lo reportamos a seguro y el seguro llamó a la clínica y le dijo, ustedes cancelaron dos citas para una persona que tiene 70 años, que tiene eh, enfermedades, do, dos operaciones de cáncer y tiene enfermedades crónicas. Y ustedes le cancelaron una cita a esa señora de 70 años. Búsquenle una cita. Entonces, como ellos lo obligaron a hacer una cita, la cita mami tiene una cita para mañana. Eh, ellos se enojaron. Y espérense que la policía está ahí, eh, todavía acosando. Yes. Hi. Uh, uh, hi, sa hi sar uh, Sergeant. Un momento que eh, yo estoy hablando con uno de los policías que mami demandó por acoso. Y esa Sarge No, quédese ahí en la línea para quédese ahí en la línea para que usted lo oiga. Eh, eh, yes, why are you here? Uh, no, uh -huh. speak speak English. Because I'm going to give this recording to the news reporters after I speak with you. Uh, yes? Uh, no, she has not been missing all of her appointments because I uh, I made two appointments for her, one on the 8th of uh, February and another one uh, for today. And Carol Polcha, who is committing fraud, uh, canceled the appointment without giving her a 24 hours notice. So I called uh, the insurance of the patient, Lisa Oyarsson, and reported her for doing that Uh, and in retaliation, she called your friends at the Waterbury Police Department and have you come to harass her. Uh, now, Luisa Oyarsson is here. I'm going to ask her a question. Luisa Oyarsson, are you Luisa Oyarsson? Yes. How old are you? 71 years old. Uh, what uh, is your um, address? 44 Center Street, Apartment 2 Pia Sin Pire, Waterbury, Connecticut. 06702. Are you okay or you need help? Yes, I'm okay. I have only little infection. I need second me. Not... Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. Did you call the police? No, I don't call the police. Okay. I, I did not call the police, and Luisa Oyarsson filed a lawsuit against you for harassment and attempted murder on 11-24-21. And you are here uh, harassing her again because we reported your friends at Griffin's family physicians. Yes, and they also and they also vandalized the apartment. Uh, no, we don't want that to happen again. But if you uh, are mad because we reported your friends at the um, clinics. So the police officer is, tell, is threatening us with coming into the apartment again and burglarizing the apartment again and assaulting and battering my elderly disabled 71 years old epileptic mother uh, if we don't open the door. This is not 
police procedure. This is not due process. This is gang-like behavior. And they get these gang uh, members from the streets and from jail, uh, according to my research, and give them a job as police officers so they can do their dirty work. And if they want to eliminate somebody, quote unquote, they uh, go and uh, assassinate them. And they are um, shielding themselves with their badge and their uh, police uniform. This is what's going on in the United States. And police officers kill people every single day, according to the news and what I have seen. And uh, our government doesn't seem to uh, be able to handle this situation. I'm not ruining any door. I'm not ruining any door. I'm okay. Uh, and the interesting thing is that they commit their crimes and they are tra uh, trained to blame the victims. So I'm going to break down the door if you don't open it uh, without a court order, of course, uh, because I'm a police officer and I say so. And you have to do what I say because I'm a police officer. And that's how they were caught uh, on 11-24-21 bragging about the, them being able to assault and batter people and commit crimes and get away with it because they were police officers uh, after the they broke down my mother's door and then sat down and watched uh, her TV. Uh, this is the way these people have fun. And again, they do this with women and with Christian women. They don't dare to do, to do it with women who have uh, a, a man or who have... Um, uh, somebody that can go to, go up to them and tell them why are you harassing women uh, and you don't dare to harass a man. Señor, mire, yo no tengo por qué abrirla. ¿Usted sabe por qué? Porque ningún departamento a mí me mantiene. Yo trabajé docena de años en este país y yo recibo mi seguro social y a mí nadie me mantiene. Luisa Oyarson is saying that she doesn't have to open the door and she doesn't call the police because she worked dozens of years of uh, her life, paid her taxes, and uh, she pays for her own apartment and nobody supports her. So she doesn't have to do what other people from the outside uh, tell her to do. And if she doesn't call the police, she doesn't have to, have to open the door. And we were legally advised not to do, not to open the door, to allow them to break it, and then file the lawsuit. And contact the news reporters. I qualify for Medicare and for another, uh, my home care Medicaid, for another insurance. Uh, and uh, she's saying that um, her home, me home care Medicaid was canceled by their friends, the DSS commissioner. If they were so worried about her to uh, do a welfare check on her, why don't they ask their uh, friend, the DSS commissioner, who has been selling her home care Medicaid and her identity to give her back her Medicaid? Perhaps she will not have health issues if they did that. So this is indicative that the matter is not medical or uh, mental or uh, any other matter, that the matter is personal. And my mother is telling them that in Spanish that we went to the Waterbury Police Department to file a, a report, and instead of filing the report like a, an honest uh, employee, they were he was uh, kind of joking around and say, oh, I know you and I know you. These people have no professionalism whatsoever, and they, they are called uh, the peace officer. Peace officers, um, that's what they are called, and um, that's a mockery to uh, the individual to to uh, the word peace because this is what they do. They call us home all the time, and they um, when we co pick up the phone or we, when we have contact with them, we call back, and this is what they said. The peace officers from the Waterbury Police Department. Fuck you! I'll kill you! Fuck you! 
that's the way they talk to us when nobody when they think that nobody's listening yes you uh, i'm sorry uh if i bothered you in anything is there anything i can do to make it up to you watch what you post about people on social media i'm sorry watch the information that you put about somebody because you'll be fucking arrested we're calling a fucking they call arrest kidnapping so they go they think that somebody is their enemy so they go and kidnap them and they call it arrest and fabricate a charge against the person and they call that arrest lawyer you're done i'm sorry is there this is when i called him back when he called and he called at two o'clock in the morning also There you have it. This is the uh, uh, Waterbury Police Department Chief of Police, uh, Fernando and his um, elements, his uh, supervisees. And when they were outside, because they have phone harassing Christian women and terrorizing them, uh, practicing police terrorism, uh, which they don't dare to do with a man or with men from Willow Street, uh, they, they were laughing outside of the door. This is how they check on, they do the welfare checks according to uh, them. This is pure criminal activity. And human rights is fully aware of this. They give time to, to these people to kill the victims, the hate crime uh, victims. Uh, and then uh, they, they, they dismiss the case because the victim is uh, uh, murdered or assassinated, uh, but they don't do anything. And you can see them to, uh, talking together and um, eating together, uh, chatting together with these criminals while they killed immigrants and harassed uh, elderly disabled victims as well as Christians. This is a putrefied situation. I'm going to translate. Why are you doing this? You can be my grandson. Why are you doing this? Uh, you have uh, a family also. Uh, meaning, you know, would you like this to be done to your family members? Of course not. When, when, they, when they are asked this, they say, not my family because I'm above the law. I'm, you know, I'm tough. I am almighty. And they are not almighty. God is almighty. They are uh, pure humans. So at this time, she's, uh, uh, they are saying, uh, laughing outside the door, that they're going to break her door again. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you have to do whatever they say, whenever they say it, and however they say it. If they come here and say you have to have intimacy with them, you have to have in intimacy with them because they are police officers. And that's what human rights is um, covering up for, and that's what they do with Christians. Uh, the elderly disabled victim, Luisa Oyarsen, is saying, why are you breaking my, my door lock? You don't have to do that. Uh, that's uh, an abuse uh, 
of your um, batch and these people um, violate their uh, batch uh, and violate their oath uh, when they become a police officers they have to take an oath uh, and they um, use their jobs in a way uh, to uh, earn extra money um, because they are immune to be prosecuted Uh, he's talking about us and she said uh, we have to check on you guys and she said not on us I am the one that uh, is sick and my daughter has uh, taken care of me for the last 22 years of course they, they're going to falsely document that I, I only take care I have only been taking care of my mother for uh, two months so they can uh, on paper uh, say that the DSS commissioners, fake social workers, and um, fake uh, case workers were the ones have, uh, that were taking care of my mother for the last uh, few years here in Waterbury, Connecticut. And then they can justify stealing my stipends, payments. It's just a matter of payments uh, and money, nothing else, and hatred for Christians. Uh, you can ask me what you want, but I'm not going to open the door because we are afraid of you because you have been doing a lot of things to civilians. You have been killing people on the street without people doing anything to you. You can be my grandson. Uh, I am looking at your face right now. Very well. Because then they they claim that, oh, it wasn't me that was there. Yes. Uh, that's why I, we were legally advised to record them. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality. For questions about over-the-counter benefits, I don't understand why that woman, uh, she means Jennifer, the kidnapper, why she's laughing because these people are uh, people without um, God and without any scrupulous. Uh, they have brothers and, and uh, mothers and, and uh, brothers and sisters, so I don't understand why they're doing this. They wouldn't like that to be done to them, but you know, they, they are un untouchable. <laughs> uh, no, if I'm a police officer, I'm untouchable. You cannot touch me because I'll kill you. They believe that the, their job is uh, a license to do whatever they want, to commit any crime with immunity. What you are doing with me, you're going to see on your mo on your mother, your family members, and your children. And those are biblic biblic biblical course, uh, curses because when they came here on 11 24 21, they grabbed a crucifix that uh, my mother had uh, on the wall and threw it on the floor, and that's called sacrilege. So these people that are doing this and are persecuting the uh, Christians uh, and are perse uh, persecuting the church of God because Christians are the church of God, the militant church, uh, as uh, we call it. And if you persecute the church of God, you persecute God. That's why you are calling uh, for, you're looking for biblical courses on you and your family for four generations of it. But these people don't know that because they were not taught anything about God. I don't believe that their parents uh, ever taught anything to them about God. Are you calling to enroll in a new... Uh, they are threatening her with 
uh, breaking down her door and saying, you want us to do the same thing that we did the other time, uh, to come here, burglarize the home, beat her up, and uh, leave her without a door. So this, this is definitely not police procedure. This is not a uh, due process in at all. And this is not uh, a welfare check. This is a retaliation because we refuse, I refuse to join the, their organized crime and um, we refuse to stop uh, practicing Christianity. So um, we, we are not going to stop uh, our practicing of our religion and they can break the door uh, every day if they want to, but we're not going to stop. Medicare plan with United Healthcare? No. No, no, deja que la tumbe, deja que la tumbe. El abogado me dijo que dejara que tumbaran la puerta. Llama a los reporteros. Él dice que la va a romper. Sí, sí, deja que la rompe, yo voy a grabar. Quédate ahí, para yo preguntarte una pregunta. Sí. Quédate ahí, quédate ahí. Luisa, are you, are, or Yasun, are you okay again? Yes, I'm okay. Yes, I'm okay. Pero, ajá, él, él dice que... Eh. He continues threatening the victim, the 71 years old victim, uh, the Dominican victim, he is Puerto Rican. And before this, we were told that um, the, uh, Puerto Rican was a power and they had Puerto Rican power, quote unquote. So this is obviously uh, a religious uh, and um, religious discrimination and prejudiced uh, actions, as well as the persecution of Christians uh, here in Waterbury, Connecticut. One more time. Show me the native word for entering. Sí. He continues threatening the victim, Luisa Oyarsun. So again, it's not a matter of health, uh, because if he was, he would call his friends uh, from DSS, the Department of Social Services, and ask, her to, uh, ask them to give her back her sold uh, home care Medicaid. Uh, so that um, argument is not a good argument for him to use, that he's worried about her health. <laughs> You're right. Yes, I have some police officers here training with uh, breaking down the door. Uh, Okay, what's your name? What's your name? This is Professor Luisa, Martin. Luisa Notice that we are here and they have not sent any uh, internal affairs officer and they have not had, they did not have an, in, an internal affairs uh, office to um, call me or them. Uh, so this uh, is indicative that this was prepared and uh, that they were told us when they um, killed the African guy on Willow Street uh, on 2019, January 2019. This was prepared because no police officer showed up and no ambulance showed up in two, uh, for two hours until the man was dead. So these things are prepared with the police department and the ambulance, which is indicative that there is corruption a lot in, in the police department. They, they, we have police officers here uh, at the door, threatening to break, threatening to break down the door because uh, we Again. reported his friend at Griffin's faculty physicians because they are committing fraud. No, 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 I cannot open the door because they were here on 11, 24, 21. They uh, kidnapped us, um, broke down the door and vulgarized the apartment.
Y madrina, ¿no tiene teléfono? No. Si usted tiene el teléfono, ¿qué decía ahí en el teléfono? Para que usted vea cuando están rompiendo la puerta. Lleva, sí. Trate eso ahí. Perdón, se ha recortado en todo eso, pero ellos dicen que como quiera lo van a romper porque ellos sí. quieren romperla. Yo estoy aquí uh, enfrente de la puerta grabando que ellos están... Again, this is police terrorism and filing a, a false emergency certificate when they know the people are well and don't have any problems. But the problem is that they stole and sold her uh, home care Medicaid and um, her uh, insurance as demonstrated in the uh, videos that uh, by this time you guys have the news reporters and they want to get rid of the victims. So they believe that they, if they have get rid of the victims, they don't have anything to worry about. Rompiendo la puerta y nosotros nos llamamos a la policía y esta es la razón, la razón por la cual ellos la están rompiendo porque nosotros recortamos un amigo de ellos que está cometiendo fraude en una oficina. Esa es la línea. This is how the Waterbury Police Department uh, practice um, uh, police terrorism again. Notice that they break my mother's door, three hundred dollars uh, door lock, uh, but they don't break the landlord's uh, door lock, which is indicative that it's not it's not a matter of uh, safety or them worrying about my mother's health or my health. It's a, a personal matter uh, because they broke my mother's three hundred dollars door lock. They did not touch the landlord's uh, door lock. Um, Lori Caruso's door lock and they were seen <laughs> in the building these the same people that are the same kidnappers that um, are breaking down my mother's door uh, breaking uh, my mother's door lock they were seen at Lori Caruso's office in the previous week uh, of uh, to this Wednesday uh, 2 15 23 so if they don't have anything to hide um, those of you who are news reporters could ask them well, can I see the um, video, uh, the security video cameras, uh, or the videos from the security cameras from the previous week? You will see they're not going to give it to you um, because they went to her office uh, that previous week. So it's not that somebody from Griffin's faculty physicians called out of the blue. This was prepared a week in advance, at least. The, uh, citizens who do not want to join the organized crime. Now they are uh, breaking down. They are breaking down the door without a court order. And uh, this is the second time that they do that. We don't want to join the organized crime. And when, when these people are doing this, they are um, obviously, uh, uh, they have obvious signs of um, uh, personal, uh, uh, doing this for personal reasons, because they're laughing outside the door. So it's not that they, they are worried about the health of my mother or myself at all. Well, uh, we were told that the police chief, Fernando, gets a monthly amount of cash money by the landlord and the organized crime for getting rid uh, they He gets a monthly amount of money from the landlords, and one of the organized crime members told my mother this while I was listening to her. ...of citizens who give a, a hard time to the organized crime when they want to commit fraud, like the fraud the United States government. Okay. When they want to come door without a court order, and uh, this is the second time that they do that because we don't want to join the organized crime and and help them commit fraud. <laughs> what, what do you mean? What do you mean the organized crime? Well, uh, we were told that the police chief Fernando gets a monthly amount of cash money by the landlord and the organized crime Trump for man. getting rid of citizens who give a, a hard time to the organized crime when they want to commit fraud, like the fraud the United States government. Okay, who is, who is Chief Fernando? Excuse me? This is how the 
how the police corrupt the citizens in the United States when they don't want to join the organized crime. We have nine, nine we have nine, nine one one online. Nine one one. Nice to meet you. Yes. Solange, are you okay? You ruined the Yes, door. we are okay. I'm okay. This is Luisa Oyarsson. She was telling them that they, she's okay all the time. Are you, you Luisa? Yes, yes. and my godmother is on the line. Nice to meet you guys. Listen, listening to our conversation. First of all, can we please just, don't come closer. Can, can we don't stop? Close, can we stop yelling? Close, I'm, I'm no, don't give her. Don't give can no, we stop yelling? Can we so talk, please? I'm not yelling. Okay. I'm recording you all. And they are a specialist in uh, lying and in fabricating things. They are saying that we are yelling uh, when in reality we are making sure that everything gets recorded. This is the uh, this is when he violently Officer Silver, I mean uh, yes uh, Sanchez violently threw my mother's walker on uh, her treadmill, scaring her to death. These are very violent people. This is the way they uh, terrorize the citizens that do not want to organize. Again, uh, these people are very violent, and this is. This is the way they... Bless you. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, if I bothered you in anything, is there anything I can do to make it up to you? This is the way they talk and act, these uh, peace officer, officers from Waterbury, the Waterbury Police Department. And they didn't say, they didn't say anything like this because Fuck it, you. I was recording I'll kill you. Fuck you. Bless you. See, they didn't say anything like that because I had the phone on my in my hand recording them. But otherwise, if I had not been recording them, they would be talking like that police officer on the phone. You and the organized crime. Uh, the Luisa Oyarzun, the elderly disabled citizen, is asking uh, Officer Sanchez or P Peace Officer Sanchez uh, why, uh, what is the matter with you? Uh, please don't break my furniture, my things. I can be your mother. Why don't you just open the doors so we can check on you guys? Now they are checking on us. These people are uh, uh, criminals and uh, cynical, according to what the law uh, says because they go commit the crime and then they act in a very uh, cynical way. And they're treating us like if we were committing a crime, breaking down our doors and things like that. These, we, I, we know people here in Waterbury, Connecticut who are selling drugs right here in this building and committing fraud left and right and, and, uh, uh, in, uh, in, on Wheeler Street and they don't dare to confront those people. They are afraid of them. You can tell them if when they uh, pass by them, they don't even look at them, the police officers. But uh, with women, they are very, very uh, brave. With Christian women. Uh, because we didn't call you. And why do you want to check on us? Déjame hablar. We have some serious concerns for you guys. Why? Uh, what are the serious concerns that you have? They are saying that they, they have serious concerns about our health, but they don't tell their... their um, DSS commissioner friend to give back my mother's uh, home care Medicaid so she can get uh, uh, medical care, the medical care that she deserves. So they are concerned when it's convenient for them to make extra money for kidnapping civilians and assassinating them, taking them to a place where they can be assassinated, but they're not concerned uh, when they uh, steal the civilians' benefits, medical benefits, so the civilians cannot get the medication and the uh, medical care that they are supposed to get. How convenient. Um, How convenient. Not going to any of her appointments. Uh, now they start to uh, continue to lie again, saying that Luisa has not gone to any of her appointments. These people do not know us. Uh, they don't know. Well, uh, they, they have our phone illegally intercepted, and that's another crime that they commit and they are fabricating that she doesn't go to any of her appointments. And I have the evidence uh, to show that they are lying. Luisa, Luisa has, un momentico, deja lo que hable, y deja que Madrina oiga. 
Luisa has two appointments, had two appointments today. And the reason why... Uh, do you hear the banging on the door? Uh, after they opened the door and they came in, they still continue to hit uh, my mother's door lock. That is $300. And she's under po the poverty level because the, the matter uh, is personal, not legal and not uh, medical and not mental. So they were, a they were angry because we put a lock on her door because they tried to... Uh, break into the apartment uh, in the middle of the night at one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning when we go to the bathroom to urinate and we can see that they put uh, they insert the key uh, into the building's uh, doors uh, lock uh, so when we put another lock they cannot do that and if they try to get get in they have to force the lock but since they have been forcing the lock and coming in to burglarize the apartment, they had to fake uh, this uh, welfare check uh, and uh, the false emergency certificate uh, procedure. They had to do that so they can see, they, uh, people can say that the, the lock, my mother's door lock was broken during this time, not that the landlords and the uh, Lori Caruso's, the building managers associates, break into the apartment every time we go out by forcing the lock. Uh, I, I hope that you are uh, following me on, on this. Let's continue with this uh, criminal behavior. You guys came. It's because Luisa, where's the other, the other phone? Donde está el otro teléfono? Do you hear the banging? They st they are still breaking down my breaking my mother's door lock. It's because Luisa reported your friends as Griffin faculty physicians for canceling her appointment, and I have recorded conversations that show that uh, your friends canceled her appointments. And I contacted United Healthcare and recorded my conversation because. Uh, See, if this was uh, 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 something a, mis uh, a misunderstanding or something legal, not personal, the moment I say that I have recorded conversations showing their friends, uh, uh, Italian woman um, Carol Porcia canceling the appointment, right there they were they they would say. Okay, you have the evidence that you didn't cancel the appointment, that they canceled the appointment. I want to see it. But notice that they don't say anything because everything was prepared. Uh, your friends canceled their appointment. So this is the this is the copy of the conversation. Let's listen to it again. It's because Luisa reported your friends as Griffin faculty physicians for canceling her appointment. And I have recorded conversations that show that uh, your friends canceled her appointments and I contacted United Healthcare and recorded my conversation because uh, your friends canceled their appointment. So this is, the, this is the copy of the conversations that I had with United Healthcare Hi. when I reported your friends. Un momentito, one moment, let me just finish speaking to him. The, the quality of care was very poor, and it was, I would say, there was no quality of care there. Mm -hmm. Because the doctor gave her the antibiotics, but did not give her a follow-up appointment to see if the antibiotics worked, and the, the antibiotics did not work. He's saying that she uh, he's saying that she missed her appointment and that's a lie. So I recorded my conversation documenting that she didn't miss the appointment, that he your friends at Griffin Faculty Physician canceled her appointment twice, and that's why I reported your friends and also reported them for fraud because they were putting uh, they were Carol uh, Porsche. They were putting her my appointments under her insurance, and that's fraud. That's why I reported her today, and then you showed up. The appointment You see, they don't want to hear the evidence that I have uh, that proves that what I uh, I am saying is the truth, which is indicative that the matter against me and my mother is personal not legal and not medical. 
See, they have no education whatsoever. This Sanchez police officer, I guarantee that if I give them a third grade uh, state exam, he will fail it. He has no education and no matters whatsoever. And forget about God, I don't believe that he ever stepped uh, into a church in his life, perhaps when he got married. But uh, this is the situation. This is why people are doing these things and taking advantage, using and abusing their positions within the government because a friend got them the, that position or, or the, the organized crime so they can do extra work under the table. Uh, and the, they, these people do this because they have no God. They don't believe in God. If they were taught God's uh, love and God's and the fear for God's um, wrath, they will not be doing this. And that's uh, all it is. Uh, they were not taught uh, anything about God when they were going, growing up. So they grew up without God. This police officer is very aggressive, so I'm just going to ask him, what is your badge number and your name, sir? We'll talk in a minute, okay? Can you please talk okay. to him? Yes. See, you ask them for their badge number and their badge name, uh, for their badge number and their names, and they don't answer. So this is indeed Carita, the matter is personal, not legal. Uh, and they are violating the law because the law says that upon request, they're, provide, they're supposed to provide you with their batch number and their complete name. Not the, the last name and the batch number, their complete name and batch number. These two individuals were the ones that were seen coming in and out of the um, uh, building manager's office, Lori Caruso's office, the week previously to this kidnapping that uh, they are doing this and the home invasion which they call a welfare check. This is a welfare check scheme. My mother doesn't qualify for a welfare check and much less I qualify for, uh, for, I, I qualify for a welfare check much, much less because being an immigrant and not uh, being uh, a native in, uh, in, the, uh, in the United States doesn't qualify you for a welfare check. You have to have uh, severe illnesses uh, and mental illnesses and um, I believe that uh, these people are uh, doing a lot of things that should not be done. But again, human rights know about this. They are their friends and they don't do anything ever. When you tell them that you're going to file a complaint with human rights, they laugh. No, I asked him his name. He has a, an obligation to give his name and batch number of a request. Uh, what is your name, first of all? My name is Jennifer. Uh -huh. Okay, and I do crisis work. Uh -huh. Notice that uh, she, when I asked her for her name, she says uh, her first name. A professional, if you work for an agency and somebody asks you for your name, you say, well, my name is Solange Martinez. They give, they always give their first name. And after this date that they kidnapped me and took me to an alcoholism and a drug addiction center, and I don't drink, smoke, or use any drugs. I have never have uh, done drugs in my life. And uh, she disappeared. And when I asked the uh, uh, officers, I mean, I asked the uh, hospital staff, for her name and uh, her position or anything that shows me that she's from the agency that she says she is. Uh, this, this, they told me that they don't know anything about her. So she disappeared and Officer Sanchez disappeared. Everybody disappeared because the deal was to um, kidnap me, take me to that place and have me assassinated there uh, through the food or through something else. Prices work? What is that prices work, uh, Jennifer? So Jennifer. price is a lot of mental health. They go out with Crisis intervention uh, is a bogus company uh, that is working on the under the umbrella of um, Western Connecticut Mental Health Network, and that's a privately owned company, as I understand it. So these people are looking for money. Uh, any way they can, 
if they have to kidnap you and falsely accuse you of having mental illnesses that they know you do not have, they will do so because for having you kidnapped there per day, they get about a thousand dollars plus other things. And as I understand that activists and lawyers who work um, investigating these type of um, kidnapping rings uh, and healthcare fraud rings, uh, they said that they found out that uh, people who do this, the kidnapping, receive uh, uh, $25,000 per capita. So uh, when they kidnapped me, they received $25,000 and I counted them and they were fives. So that means $5,000 for each of them, which is not bad. And then they would have to give something, you know, to the uh, ambulance people and to the people who... Uh, the ER supervisor, uh, uh, Miss Phyllis, uh, for uh, accommodating me there and trying to kill me uh, and things like that. So this is really deplorable uh, behavior uh, and it is not of God. So, and when something is not, uh, does not come from God, uh, it comes from the devil because there is nothing in between. Some people say, oh, I'm not religious. Uh, but I don't do anything wrong, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't use drugs, I don't steal. When you are not with God, you are with the devil. There is nothing in between. That's a, a devil's lie. Oh, you don't have to be religious, you don't have to um, look for God. Yes, you have to look for God, because when you don't look for God, you end up like these people. In sins and weakness. Jennifer, Jennifer, um, and what is your last name? People put C-I-T for crisis. C-I-T. So that stands for... I ask for her last name, and she says C-I-T for crisis. These these, <laughs> these uh, gang members are something else. The crisis intervention team. Refuse to provide her name. Provide... Okay, crisis intervention team is for drug addictions, uh, drug addicts and alcoholics that uh, have a fit because they need their drugs or their alcohol or they cannot control themselves. I have been talking to these people, these very violent people for uh, a long time at this time and uh, about an hour or so. And I have not shown any signs of violence, unlike them because they have shown uh, a lot of violence and gang member uh, behavior, gang members' behavior and gang members' language. Her last name. Uh, by the way, if you work for the government, you have a legal obligation to provide your complete, okay. to fully identify yourself. Okay. 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 But maybe no can we just talk for a couple minutes, no okay? So you are from Ellos no están agresivos, acostumbraron la puerta. Un momentito, mami, no te pongas nerviosa, que yo sé que ellos te están poniendo nerviosa para... Esa es la, la, la manera que ellos tienen de antagonizar. Uh, I'm telling my mother, don't get nervous because I know you're getting nervous because that's the way they terrorize civilians uh, into doing whatever they want. So that's the way that they uh, terrorize the citizens when they don't want to do what the organized crime says to do. You are from Christ Intervention, right? Correct. And I go out with the police department uh -huh. also, right? So I she goes out with the police department. Uh, so that means that... Uh, she works with the police, so the matter is with the police and with Griffin's Health Corporation, uh, not with my mother's health, because I see my mother very well and I see me very well, so uh, there is no crisis here. The only ones that are trying to provoke a crisis is them, uh, because they want to make us aggressive, uh, uh, have us start cursing them out or, or things like that, and they get angry when we don't do that, when it, when we don't behave uh, street-like. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there was a call from your doctor's office. Yes, yes okay. but who, who called from the doctor's office? Because the person that I, that I called you was the same person that I reported for committing fraud at her doctor's office. Can we just put the phone down a little bit? That's okay. Fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were trying just to figure out what was going on here, okay? Because I know we spoke with the, the building management, and I guess, ma'am, you've lived here for about four yes, years. Okay. 
She translates. Thank you. I speak little bit. I'm a big citizen, but I don't speak a lot, you know? Okay. Only little. Okay. So, uh, so you live here and you are the caretaker for your mother. Yeah. For the last 22 years. Okay. See, they don't like me to say for the last 22 years because when I say that, anybody would say if she has been taking care of her mother for the last 22 years and her mother looks the way she, uh, she looks, uh, very well taken care of, then what are these people doing in here? So she didn't like me to say that, but I said it anyway. Your mother has lived in this building for about four years? Correct. Okay, when did you move in full time? Uh, on uh, July 7th, uh, 2019. All right. So the repeat. My mother moved in uh, on July, July 7th, 2019. They know very well because if she spoke to the management and she did because we, uh, she was seen in uh, coming out of the uh, building manager's office the previous week, uh, she knows that I've been here uh, living with my mother, taking care of her for the last four years. So she's asking me questions to make believe that she's she, she just came here and she doesn't she she doesn't know anything about the situation and she's trying to find out things about the situation. This woman disappeared as soon as she, she dropped me off the at the uh, she dropped dropped uh, me off at the hospital's ER, Waterbury Hospital. Uh, I never saw her again and uh, if that's the follow up that this um, Western Connecticut Mental Health Network uh, company uh, does, you know, I have serious doubts about that. Uh, so this is the uh, type of element that um, these people have working for the WCMHN, a private company. That I got and as to why we wanted to do a wellness check is that I guess you're the doctor's office. I don't know. Does anyone? <laughs> they call it our wellness check, terrorizing civilians. Oxford. Yes. Yes, the doctor's office. Oh, that's the Griffin. Griffin Hospital. The Griffin Hospital. Hospital. Okay. It's, it's called uh, Griffin's Physicians. Uh, Griffin's fa um, Faculty Physicians. Correct. All right. So I guess that's what we're trying to figure out. She didn't even bother to learn the name of the clinic. Well, that's how she, worried she was. And this same woman was the one that when I told her, you need a court order to draw my blood, they drew my blood by force. And when I told her, you need a court order signed by a judge to draw my blood, she said, I'll do my own, my own court order. She wrote uh, something on a, on a piece of paper, signed it, and she said, this is the court order. And I said, may I read it? And they did not allow me to read it. And I was asking for my call since I was, uh, uh, arrested according to them but I was kidnapped because no crime uh, was committed if you don't commit a crime and they arrest you it's not an arrest it's kidnapping so after she signed the supposed court order <laughs> uh, she disappeared and never appeared uh, again and then when I asked for her at the hospital when I was being quote-unquote discharged after I contacted the news reporters all of my mental illnesses suddenly disappeared. You know, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, delusion, um, uh, Parkinson, everything disappeared. And they uh, told me that I had uh, an incognito psychosis uh, because they want to say that uh, I am thinking that the police officers uh, call me and, it's, uh, and tell me that they're gonna kill me and that I was going to be F-U-C-K-I-N-G arrested. Uh, and it's in my mind that never happened, that psychosis. <laughs> this is what they want to, uh, the argument that they want to build. I guess that you have a different story, but they reported that your mom has missed a lot of appointments. They try to reach you, you don't always answer the phone. Do they have This woman can work uh, a, a, for a TV. She's trying to make believe that uh, she's going uh, on whatever they reported. Notice that she's not allowing me to show uh, them evidence that what what she's saying is is uh, a lie. They said, uh, I said, I have the recordings that prove that what you're saying is a lie, and they don't let me speak. And they threatened me uh, with hanging up the phone or else, because on the phone I have the recordings. Recordings of that? Let us finish talking. Okay. So so this, I'm, I'm not here to debate in between. So they asked for a wellness check because they were worried about your mom. 
Okay. They are so worried about my mom that they have not sent uh, the prescription for uh, the Boniva or the Actonel or the antibiotics Amoxicillin in two, uh, almost two months or the um, the uh, other medication that uh, they were supposed to send. Uh, and um, when I call and my mother calls and asks to speak to the nurse practitioner, Nicole, she doesn't come to the phone. That's how worried, very worried they are about her and her health. These people are so cynical. They, they must be friends with Noriega, the one that has uh, done this to the uh, bishop in uh, Nicaragua and uh, kidnapped him and has him in jail for the longest time without him committing any crime. And he is falsely accusing the bishop of committing crimes that everybody knows he did not commit. They were worried about her. Why did they pass her, her two appointments? Today's appointment and the one on the, on the 8th of February. Okay, I don't, I don't know that answer because I don't work for that. And they don't know any, when you ask them for the truth, they never know the answer, but they uh, know what they have to do, which is kidnap, assault and batter, terrorize and practice uh, domestic terrorism. Yeah, to harass people. Okay, let her talk, let her talk. Yes, go ahead. Okay, no, no harassment. I mean, the police asked multiple times for you to open the door. One moment. You can see that these people are making uh, elderly disabled citizen results. You are some very nervous and very apprehensive. And this person uh, who refused to give his batch number and his I name. I don't have a batch number, okay? Look, my name is right there. Sanchez. Sanchez. There you go. And you don't have a batch number. No batch number. Uh, what is your uh, your rank? I'm a sergeant. Sergeant, okay, Sergeant he, Sanchez. He speaks Spanish and English mixed, which is indicative that he's not educated. You, When you are educated, you speak English or uh, Spanish. You don't speak Spanish, Spanish English. Sa Sanchez. Uh, and so you are from Christ Intervention, and you say that the, the doctor's office called you. Uh, Not me. They called, they called the police asking uh -huh. for a wellness check. So like I said, I go out with the police department uh -huh. and, and do mental health ass uh -huh. assessments. Assessment, that. okay. She does mental health assessment. I can guarantee this woman doesn't have a sixth grade uh, level. If you give her a state test, she's not going to pass a sixth, a sixth grade level. Okay. Exactly. Why do they ask you to do mental health assessment if we haven't seen any psychiatrist or any psychologist well, that, that doesn't at always, that facility? It doesn't they, always matter. They did report that you called several times, 10 to 15 times, rambling, not making any sense. And they love the word, the word rambling. What happened is that apparently the ring of kidnappers tell their uh, workers you have to use that word rambling because a uh, rambling you can uh, easily use it with drugs and alcohol and say the person is an alcoholic or a drug addict because that person cannot um, speak well so that person might have mental illnesses caused by drug addiction or alcoholism and so they used a lot that word uh, rambling and also, what is the what is the other word? Uh, incoherent. Uh, uh, those are the two words that these people with a very low level of education use a lot. Apparently, they memorize it, and that's what I believe. Yes, I recorded my conversations, but they reported that she missed her appointments and that I called ten to fifteen times, not making any sense and rambling. Yes. I tried to show you the recordings that shows that that's not true. But you refuse to see the you you refuse to hear the uh, re the recordings. So what are, are we going to do? So, you so refuse to see so evidence that what exactly. you're saying is not true. Okay. So a you know obviously there's some safety concerns that you put a deadbolt on the lock yeah, on your mm -hmm. door without. Uh, this is the safety concern. We live in a high crime area, Waterbury, uh, Connecticut. And they they claim that it is a safety concern because we put a, a, a deadlock on the door because we have documented very well, by the way, that the building manager has been giving people, uh, strangers, the key to this apartment 
they came here, had orgies, and had uh, and were drinking and, and uh, using drugs, and they gave my mother, my elderly disabled mother, a deadly bacteria called Garnarella. So because we put a dead bolt uh, lag on the door, they they are claiming that we are mentally ill. We would we would be mentally ill if we were oblivious to the dangers of this neighborhood, a high crime area neighborhood, and oblivious to the fact that we have uh, medical evidence that shows that mom, uh, my mother, had a deadly bacteria given to her uh, that is uh, uh, caused uh, or obtained by sleeping with multiple sexual having multiple sexual partners and my mother has uh, not had uh, a sexual partners for the last 22 years or so. So it would it is the other way around. These people have no uh, intelligence uh, whatsoever because I would have claimed something else. They are saying that because we want to protect ourselves and protect and we live in a high uh, crime area and we put a, 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 a deadbolt on the lack uh, we are mentally ill. This doesn't make any sense. And do you know why? Okay, but that, that's, that's okay. Hazard. Do you know why uh, I put a, a, a lock on the door? Because I reported to the police department several times that the manager who came with you and had the door broken a second time mm -hmm. uh, violently without a court order uh, and burglarized the apartment uh, after searching it without a search warrant breaks into the apartment every time we go out to uh, any place and steal things. They have stolen over $3,000 uh, $3, worth of jewelry and other things from this elderly disabled citizen. And we contacted the police. The police uh, refused to file the report or to document that. When because remember, they pay the police, according to an organized crime member, uh, a monthly um, amount of cash for uh, protecting uh, the building manager and the uh, the um, landlords uh, and removing anybody that is an obstacle for them. So of course they're going to falsify the police reports and they're going to use their police uh, to terrorize uh, the civilians and the building tenants that they don't want in the buildings because they're Christians or because of any other reasons, because they're not Puerto Ricans or Italians. He contacted the police at Legally Advised and asked for the camera uh, recordings and other documentations about uh, your breaking down the door and trying to murder her after she won a court case without a lawyer against your friend, the DSS commissioner then you refuse to give her the police records. And according to- Who tried to murder your mother? The DSS commissioner, after she won a court case and she and he owes her a, a half a million dollars in retroactive benefits. I believe you guys have the court order signed by Veronica Keen because I gave it to the news reporters in previous uh, recordings. But the after DSS the commissioner tried to- how did he try to murder your mother? Well, on 11 24 21, we contacted, we called 911 mm -hmm. and recorded that you violently broke down her door without a court order and searched her apartment without a search warrant. And um, because we did that, then the police retaliated and trashed her car. Toyota Corolla, Toyota Forerunner 1996. After that, we documented that besides that, uh, because we called, uh, we called 911 and then contacted the, the news reporters, then coincidentally, her car, her uh, Toyota Corolla 1995, had the brake lines caught, coincidentally, after she had that uh, situation with the police department. And, and she feel, filed- you feel that the police department cut your mother's brake lines? No, I'm tell I'm, I said that coincidentally, after we filed this lawsuit, against the Water Bay Police Department, two federal lawsuits there. I can take a uh, Yes, after we filed that federal- And she acts like if she was educated, you know? she She's a, a very good actress. Uh, she, she should be acting in uh, TV. Uh, too bad her, her soul is putrefied and uh, she's involved in this sin and weakness because she's a, a good actress. 
uh, you you would uh, think that uh, she's uh, she doesn't know she, this was not prepared uh, the previous week and she would not uh, she was not coming out of the uh, building manager's office the previous week and coincidentally my mother saw her and Sanchez officer Sanchez coming out of the office and going into the office of the building manager <laughs> and then she's saying she's claiming oh we were uh, called today uh, because your mother has missed a lot of appointments and i have the evidence to show that this is not true so i uh, i uh, hope that you will enjoy this tip uh, those of you uh, those of you who are news reporters and search uh, investigate this lady here because i I am sure that if you investigate her and this uh, officer Sanchez, you will find the hidden treasure. Lawsuit, then her uh, for Toyota Forerunner 1996 got trashed, and then somebody cut uh, the brake lines of the Toyota Corolla 1995. Coincidentally, dile que lo grabe si lo puedes grabar. Yo le estoy diciendo a la policía madrina. Are these all the people in the suit? Yes, in the lawsuit. And Watch now. Now she's going to try to claim that because there are uh, more than 300 people on the lawsuit, that this is a sign of mental illnesses. This woman <laughs> is something else. You can tell she has no education whatsoever. She's a street woman. Uh, and uh, she comes up with things that do not make any sense, like, you know, the dead bolt uh, la uh, 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 lock on the door in a high crime area. Uh, and because my mother missed a lot of appointments and they have to do say that uh, because if they are not here because she has missed, uh, uh, because if she had not missed any appointments, then the, the place, the matter would be personal, not uh, legal and not medical. So they have to lie uh, in order to be able to be here uh, harassing elderly disabled citizens and Christians. This is, that's uh, Luisa Oyasu. This is my lawsuit against the Waterbury Police Department for kidnapping, um, um, uh, assault, and, uh, assault and battery can I, and can other I just, charges. Just to verify, so you, you named 314 people in your lawsuit? Yes, because uh, I spoke to a group of attorneys that specialized in um, organized crime, yeah, okay. and they told me that I have to document everybody that is involved, even though if they uh, knock the uh, lawsuit down because of the organized crime influence uh, or corruption in the case, the uh, lawsuit can always be opened after the uh, uh, notice of claim is filed. So, uh, so now she's a lawyer also. She knows about, uh, she knows the the uh, exact amount of people that you can name on a lawsuit. <laughs> and she diagnoses mental illnesses for the amount of uh, people that are named on a lawsuit. I believe uh, there was a lawsuit um, involving uh, Trump and Trump's son or something like that, Donald Trump's son. Uh, that was 54 pages long. Perhaps their lawyers, the lawyers that drafted that lawsuit, uh, have to be also uh, put in the alcohol, uh, the Center for Alcoholics and Drug, Drug Addicts uh, of the Waterbury um, Hospital. This woman is something else. Uh, she's just swinging to see what she can hit. What is, I, where is I have to document everybody that uh, comes here and is involved in this harassment and police uh, terrorism. And that's why I asked you for your name. And as you can see, everybody's name is listed in their last name as well, because I have to list the last name of each person that I list in the lawsuit. And I believe that's the reason why you refuse to give yeah, me your last I'll, name. I'll, listen, I, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'm a state okay. employee. I, I work. I'll, I'll okay. give you my last name. I'm not. I'm just trying to focus. Yes. Right. Do you have Do you have a card? Business card? If you're a state employee, you have a business card. No, I don't. I have, have a copy the of state. it. I go out with the police. It's Giordano is my last name. Giordano. Okay. So you don't have a business card? Nope. Okay. But if you ever to call 911, I'm what's, only... What's your... Uh, 
How do you spell your last name? It's G I. Mm -hmm. O R. G what a coincidence, all the officers involved in uh, our kidnappings and assault and battery uh, are um, either Italians or Puerto Ricans. And these were the uh, national origins that threatening, threatened us with, uh, you don't know who you're dealing with when uh, the whole thing started. Just because we are Christians and we want to live a Christian-like uh, a, la, a Christian like life. I O R D A N O. D A N O. Correct. Okay. So let's just talk about you for a bit. Do so you let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Okay, but you're not letting me talk. Oh, all, okay. okay. So there does come down to a basis. Listen of of the door. I mean, especially these fine gentlemen can explain and what the concern is if there was ever a fire <clears throat> safety. You can't have. <laughs> this woman has to be something. <laughs> She's saying that because you uh, put a door lock in a high crime area, because your building manager has belgarized, has a history of belgarizing your apartment when you go out, that's a mental. That's a sign of mental illness. Let's hear to the nonsense that she has to say. Lock on the door. Looks like it was pretty much barricaded. Let's do it again. D A N O. Correct. Okay. So let's just talk about you for a bit. Do so you let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Okay, but you're not letting me talk. Oh, okay. okay. So there does come down to a basis. Listen of of the door. I mean, especially these fine gentlemen can explain and what the concern is. If they're fine gentlemen, I really don't believe that fine is uh, the appropriate word for these criminals. Never a fire <laughs> safety. You can't have the lock on the door. Looks like it was pretty much barricaded. Uh, there has never been a fire in this apartment. However, there has been uh, several fires in the building, uh, and I don't see them breaking down those people's doors because they're not Dominican and they're not Christians. All right. There's concerns about your. Do you mom. know? Do you know why we? And she claims that we barricaded the door. We did not barricade the door. We put a a, a piece of wood behind the door. So they can, when they try to come in at night and they turn the uh, nap, the, the nap cannot be turned because the piece of wood is there. And on several occasions, we put a, a doorbell, I mean, a, 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 a regular bell on uh, top of the doorknob. And when, you, they, when they turn it at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning or 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, when the bell falls off, it, it, it has a sound. So that's why we realize that they are trying to get into the apartment at two o'clock in the morning in a high crime neighborhood, uh, in, a, in a building where the uh, building manager has demonstrated uh, many times that uh, she's a lied, she, commit, she committed perjury, uh, and she has tried to assassinate us uh, many times. She's saying that uh, the service coordinator, uh, the Mr. Killis, when he first came into the apartment, I mean, came into the building to work for the building, he said never to leave the door unlocked, I mean, uh, or unsecured because we are in a high crime neighborhood and if something happens and somebody comes in or does something, the building manager is not responsible or the management is not responsible. So now they're, they're saying that because you put a, a, a door lock on your door to uh, make uh, sure that uh, you uh, are safe in your apartment, which you pay for, uh, is a sign of mental illnesses. Yes, they also told her, they also, I'll translate, they also told her not to have the door uh, unlocked because this, this we are in a high crime area and this area uh, is noticed uh, for break-ins and other things, and that's why we safety put is, yeah, safety, safety is a concern. Is important, okay, but having an illegal lock on your door. Mm -hmm. And she's saying that 
uh, the lock is illegal on the door. If the lock was illegal on the door, why didn't they file a police report and took the took my mother to court? Because it, when they say that the door lock is illegal and they take her to court, she was legally advised by an attorney to say she has the legal right to feel safe in her apartment and to enjoy her monthly rent. Uh, and if she doesn't feel safe in a high crime area when the building manager uh, has, has access to her key, has vulgarized her apartment many times. And we have evidence uh, that she uh, breaks into the apartment with her, her gang. Uh, and that's why she put a lock on her door. And that's not a sign of mental illnesses. That's ridiculous what, the, what this woman is claiming. That's why I'm telling you, because her arguments are not uh, a, um, of that of an intelligent person. I think that she might uh, have a, a safe grade level of education, the most. What about you yourself? That lock is not illegal. Why is it illegal? The, well, it's the building See, I asked her a question and she doesn't know what she first she says it's illegal then I asked her why and she doesn't know what to say so her partner in crime her other kidnapper partner uh, is claimed that the building manager says it's illegal I'll tell you a secret the law says and any uh, landlord and tenant lawyer is going to say the law say that you can put whatever on on a, on a lease I can't have a building and say I don't want any African Americans here in the building. If you're an African American, I'll kick you out. And then when I go to court to enforce that clause, uh, the court judge is going to tell me that's um, uh, 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 that's uh, unenforceable, un unenforceable uh, uh, clause in your uh, lease because uh, it is against the, it is con unconstitutional. It is against our constitution. So you cannot discriminate somebody uh, 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 in the area of housing. So you cannot say, I don't want Christians or I don't want African-Americans. So you can put whatever you can say, okay, if you move into my building, you have to uh, have intimacy with me and you have to have, um, uh, you have to be my my lover or whatever. And when you go to court, that uh, is not going to be enforceable. Why? Because that's an illegal cl uh, clause in, in your lease. And that's a problem. And they know that this is not illegal to put a lock on your door. So let's continue. Doesn't want it on your door. Uh, Dios, that's and they need a key. You're supposed to okay. provide them with a the key. Yes. And Let's repeat it. This area uh, is noticed uh, for break-ins and other things, and that's why we safety would... Is, yes, safety, safety is, is a concern. Is important, okay? But having an illegal lock on your door mm -hmm. is not... A, what about you yourself? That lock is not illegal. Why is it illegal? The, well, the, well, the building management doesn't want it on your door. Yeah. Yes. That's and called, they need a key. You're supposed to okay. provide them with a key. And yes. Know. And do you know why I don't, I don't provide them with a key? Because they bring into the apartment, as I said before, and vulgarize it when we go out. So lunch, do you have any mental health issues? Do you no. take medication? No. no. Okay. One moment, please. No. I and these people come into your house, like they own you and asking you questions and, and, and things like that. I have to tell you, you don't need to answer any question and you don't need to cooperate with this type of kidnappers. I answered the question because I didn't, I don't have anything to hide, but you don't need to do that. Legally, they cannot force you to answer any of their questions. They don't have, you don't have to cooperate with them. I do not take any medication. I don't have mental uh, illness. Have you ever seen a psychiatrist? No. You've never been sent to the hospital for an evaluation? Okay. One moment. Uh, uh, I was. you don't agree with it. Yes. I was kidnapped uh, 10 times by the uh, police. Ten times. One time uh, in New Jersey, they accused me of uh, disorderly conduct when I went to get the title of my um, apartment in New Jersey. And when we contacted the news reporters, they said that it was a mistake, that uh, they did that because it was a mistake and um, Univision ran the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, we moved to uh, New York, 
um, they broke down the door about seven times in New York because we refused to join the And these people tell you, you know, that illegal provisions are legal because they don't, they don't know uh, any, any, uh, any type of law. They are raised on the streets. They are given these uh, jobs, uh, defrauding, stealing, kidnapping, and killing people. And they are living la vida loca. And, you know, they go to people's homes and tell them that uh, they have a, a, a legal lock on the door and stuff like that. Things that do not make any sense. Uh, these um, illegal uh, clauses that people put on their uh, uh, lists, uh, they're not enforceable. They're not enforceable. I can say, you know, uh, I have a building. I don't want any Chinese in my building. If I go to court, the judge is going to tell me that's an illegal provision on your lease. Why? Because it is unconstitutional. You cannot put a, pro a provision, an illegal provision on your lease because it, 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 when you go to enforce it, they're not, it's not going to be enforceable. Organized crime and told me that I was not supposed to be the daughter of Luisa Oyarzun because Luisa Oyarzun is, is white and I was black. And the police said that I was a nigger, that uh, Luisa could not possibly have uh, me as a daughter because I was a nigger and she was white. So that was one of the, what was, that was another one of the times that the police officers broke down our door. So you can see that uh, the police have issues with me and they are personal, never legal, because if I have been kidnapped 11 times and they were unable to keep me, uh, that means that they were uh, unable to prove anything. And so after they got tired of kidnapping me and trying to charge and charging me with uh, fabricated charges, uh, they decided to go the mental health uh, uh, way because if they are when they arrested me, I used to tell them, you know, the from uh, uh, one, two, three, four, the ninth time. I remember I told you, you know that you I have to see a judge within 24 hours. I'll be out of here within 24 hours. Whatever you fabricated, I'm going to ask you to prove it in court, and you are not going to be able to prove it. So after the ninth time they went to the mental health issue because they said this is not working so let's try something else and now they're trying to say that i have mental illnesses because i put a a, a lock on my mother's door uh, in a high crime area uh, in a high crime uh, neighborhood this is ridiculous this this is obviously personal not legal and not medical in new york and one or two here in in waterbury uh, this is the second one in Waterbury. After I was told to commit fraud by the building uh, manager, Lori Caruso, with a phantom um, cleaning company, okay, uh, trying so to document, uh, let me speak, I'll let you speak, trying to document, uh, to falsely document that um, uh, somebody used to come to this building, to this uh, apartment to clean and it was a lie. So they are defrauding the United States government by saying that people come into this apartment to clean, and I'm the one who cleans this apartment and who does everything for Luisa Yasun for the last 22 years. And after that, they tried to, the building manager, Lori Caruso, tried to uh, force her to uh, put on paper that she has been moving around every a couple of months or so so they can keep her on a roving program that the DSS commissioner has for people who move around a lot. And then he gets a lot of money, supposedly, for moving people around, buying them furniture, and buying, buying them other things when it was uh, untrue. Okay, but so I want to go back to when uh, Let me just finish my sentence. Were, so because we are Christians, all, as you can yeah. see, yeah. we are Christians, no, we refuse to join the, the uh, fraud. No, ella me está, I'm going to translate for her so she understands what's going on. Ella me preguntó que si yo tengo una historia de eh, problemas sí, mentales. Yo lo oí, yo lo Ajá, y yo le dije que no, que sí, ella me dijo. Que lo que quiera, ya, ella me dijo, eh, yo tengo que, tra que traducir. Ella me dijo que si a mí me había, uh, que si yo había, sí. había estado en un, en un uh, hospital psiquiátrico, entonces yo le, yo le expliqué 
que yo fui raptada por la policía varias veces por cuestiones de corrupción y yo, yo no quise hacer cosas ilegales y ellos me raptaron. Entonces, sí, yo puedo haber estado, pero raptada, no porque yo necesito el, 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 el equipo. Mira, de, de, espérate, porque... So these, these uh, criminals, what they do is that they kidnap you, they break down your door, they kidnap you knowing that uh, you don't have any mental illnesses. They claim that you have mental illnesses. So they kidnap you one time, two times, three times, four times, ten times. And then uh, when you contact the news reporters, they have to let you go because they don't want the news reporting digging uh, into their businesses, illegitimate businesses because they might find the hidden treasure and get uh, <laughs> an investigative award for news reporting, but um, they let you go. So when they have you kidnapped and uh, illegally incarcerated in psychiatric wards, then they say that you have a history of mental illnesses. And that's not a history of mental illnesses. That's a hi history of kidnapping uh, by police because a history of mental illnesses is that you have uh, gone to uh, the doctor. They run a test, scientific test, and looking at somebody and saying, you changed your door lock, you have a mental illness, is not a history of mental illnesses. A history of mental illnesses is when you go to the doctor, the doctor run, run the psychiatric tests Run the do the MRIs, do the scientific uh, test. Uh, there are many, and if these people knew they had a little bit of education and a little bit of academia, they would know that these tests exist, and they would not be uh, saying things that are verbal garbage uh, that do not make any sense. Uh, and so after they kidnapped you 10, uh, 15 times, and they put you in these uh, places that they have connections with, and they get $25,000 here in the United States for doing that, so they can, uh, the businesses can defraud the insurances and the United States government, then they claim that you have a mental illnesses. That's not a mental uh, illnesses history. That's a, a, a kidnapping history by the perpetrators. So let's keep that straight. Mental illnesses is when you have been uh, diagnosed, when you are, uh, go to a doctor, a psychiatrist, and he runs the scientific test, not hearsay, not opinions, because in the uh, scientific world, opinions don't matter. Uh, uh, if they have a, a medical test, an MRI, or something that shows a tumor in your brain, or uh, the appropriate tests uh, run, if they do that and they have scientific medical evidence, not hearsay and not uh, gossip from people that you've reported for fraud, uh, that's, that's not mental illnesses history. That's a history of harassment and um, ter domestic terrorism. So there's a difference, mental illnesses and a history of harassment and domestic terrorism. So let's continue. I'm going to translate what my mother is saying. My daughter, Professor Solange Martinez, has a sister. Professor Martinez has her. She was the one that uh, came here first uh, to the United States. Caridad Martinez. Has a sister. Her name is Caridad Martinez. She does have mental illnesses. My other daughter, uh, Caridad Martinez, not uh, Solange Martinez, the professor. And she's mentally ill. She has Parkinson and she has uh, many other problems. A lot of problems. Uh, so Caridad Martinez came here. 
And so when she, uh, even though she came to the United States first, uh, Caridad Martinez never went to college. But uh, this one, Professor Solange Martinez, my daughter, uh, and she was the youngest one and uh, she did go to college and she uh, uh, graduated from uh, college and got her graduate degree as well. Solange, Professor Martinez. Uh, and uh, the, the other one, Caridad Martinez, the one that has the mental illnesses, she was very jealous of her. She was always jealous of Solange Martinez. This one. Came here, went to college, and became a professional. And uh, Solange Martinez always tried to help uh, the other one, Caridad Martinez, in whatever she could. And the problem is that uh, she has the mental illnesses and she's jealous of her. What happened is that she's trying to explain to these officers uh, if uh, they had uh, some type of intelligence that uh, she's saying that because apparently they, somebody took my sister's uh, medical profile and put it under my uh, medical profile and falsified my medical profile. But if they do the MRIs and they do the pertinent test, they, if they run the appropriate test, they would uh, see that this is a lie and that these people are lying. So, what does that have to do with it, says the police uh, officer. And she's saying that, she's explaining to the police officers that my sister is mentally ill and they are trying to put her record under my name to falsely accuse me of being mentally ill. This is called slandering somebody. Uh, and when you write it on paper, it's called labeling somebody and for that uh, you can you have to get compensated and this is filing what these people are doing is filing a false emergency certificate and for this they should be prosecuted they can be prosecuted and put in jail and if they have any type of licenses to do any type of job uh, it is cancelled uh, it should be cancelled this woman said that this she works for the state I don't believe so. Um, she she said she works for um, a crisis intervention, and according to what I could research, crisis intervention is a privately owned company, healthcare company. So the uh, violent officer, the most violent officer, Sanchez, is asking her. Uh, if I have mental problems also, and, she, and my mother is telling her, no, never. And my mother is telling them uh, she has never had uh, mental problems, Solange Martinez, and she does everything for me. Uh, my uh, uh, daughter, Solange Martinez, does everything for me. You see this apartment? She uh, fixed this apartment herself. She takes me to the supermarket. She takes me to the supermarket. To the, doctors. Doctors. the violent police officer, the most violent police officer, Sanchez, the one that was seen with um, Jennifer uh, the previous week coming out of the office of the building manager, Lori Caruso's, the building manager's office, Lori Caruso's, he's asking her what type of ma, uh, health problems, physical health problems she has. I have two cancer operations because the police officer asked her what mental problems, I mean, what problems she has. She has uh, two cancer operations. She has a long uh, tumor uh, problems with her legs, uh, her knees. I have problems in my uh, hips and my knees. Uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, problems with her um, extremities uh, and arthritis. And I have multiple sclerosis, but I have uh, controlled all the... the, uh, the uh, I have epilepsy, but I am control. I have it controlled uh, because uh, she gets me the medication and look at all the medications that I have that she get me. 
So if if I was taking care of my mother for 22 years, you know that I don't have any, many mental illnesses because with the illnesses that she has, she would have been dead uh, by now. Look at all the medication that I have because um, Solange has gotten the medication for me. The problem is that I have, Solange got me an appointment uh, at, at recent faculty physicians and uh, they don't want to give me the appointments. So today, for lunch, got me an appointment, and uh, they refused to see me today via telehealth uh, service. And I told uh, for lunch to get me another appointment because. Uh, I needed the appointment. So I asked her to get me an appointment. She got me an appointment. Do you hear me translating? These people had the audacity to say that I have problems processing thoughts after I called the news reporters and gave them the evidence of the kidnapping. All of a sudden, they uh, uh, that problem disappeared, was cured uh, by a miracle in less than 24 hours. And they claimed then that I had an incognito psychosis, that I believed that the police officers go to my home uh, and break down the lock and um, call me uh, on the phone uh, and uh, threaten me and that is all in my mind because I have psychosis and um, this, is, uh, this has never happened. And uh, it is all in you, my uh, mind. I'm sorry, uh, if I bothered you in anything, is there anything I can do? This is a police officer calling, uh, calling me and then when I called him back, he, he tells me this. This is all in my mind, they claim. To make it up to you? Watch what you post about people. <laughs> this is all in my mind. Let me just uh, show you. That is all in my mind, according to them. According to the psychiatrist, and uh, this uh, Jennifer Giordano psychiatrist, <laughs> and the police officer psychiatrist, mm -hmm. this law that they have in, in Connecticut has Fuck to be. Fuck you! I'll kill you! Fuck you! This is all in my mind. This never happened. That's what they're claiming. The psychiatrist, uh, Jennifer, uh, the one that uh, diagnosed me with a mental illnesses because I put a lock on my mother's door in a high crime area. Uh, she's saying that this is all in my mind, that I have psychosis. <laughs> After they took me to uh, a drug addiction and alcoholism, uh, center for drug addicts and alcoholics. They diagnosed me with that, uh, and they diagnosed me with uh, incognito psychosis <laughs> to cover the backs of the um, police officers that have committed the hate crimes against us. Because if I don't have that psychosis, then the police uh, is guilty, and the police cannot be guilty of their crimes, of course. Just like in Nicaragua. The bishop must be guilty because the police in Noriega cannot be guilty of persecution uh, of the church. So the problem is that uh, you are not. The police officer cannot even speak uh, Spanish, his native tongue. Yeah, uh, attending, to, attending your appointments. The police officer is falsely accusing her of not attending the, her, her doctor's appointment. See, they are making believe that they don't know that uh, the one that canceled the appointment was Carol Portia. They know very well that the one that canceled the appointment was Carol Portia, but they're making believe that they believe that uh, we canceled the appointments because I have the phone uh, in, uh, next to, to them and I'm recording them. So they figured we have to make believe that we really be believe that she canceled her appointments 
uh, in order to be on the safe side, if this comes out, if the news reporters uh, run the story, then we don't, we don't have to go to jail because we will just say, oh, we believe that she canceled the appointment. Uh, that would be fine. The problem is that they did not allow me on video, they did not allow me to show them the evidence that proved that their friend, Carol Polcha, the Italian friend, we are Dominicans, was the one who canceled the appointment and I had the evidence. So that argument that, oh, I didn't know is not going to fly like they say. And Luisa just is telling, telling her that she has never missed an appointment. No, 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 and, and notice that these people claim that they are worried about my mother's health and my health, but none of them have a mask on in a closed space. That's a violation of the um, epidemi epidi epidemiologists' uh, rules and regulations because currently we have three pandemics and now we have four pandemics in a high infecting state, the state of Connecticut. We have the um, monkeypox, COVID-19, birds flu, and uh, the uh, hemorrhagic fever. So obviously if they come into, if they gang up on, on an elderly disabled person with two cancer operations and uh, uh, heart problems, two leaking heart valves, they obviously are not worried about her health. They're worried about getting their twenty her, their $25,000 for kidnapping civilians and legally incarcerating them in an, uh, an alcoholism and drug addiction center when they know the person doesn't drink, smoke, or use any drugs. Uh, and they, um, uh, this is indicative that the matter against my mother and I are not legal or uh, medical or mental. The matter is personal. Uh, and I have to document that these people are by in violation of the uh, pandemic, uh, pandemic uh, laws. They're not supposed to be here in a closed environment without a mask, and none of them have a mask. Can I get my mask and my mother's mask so I can we can put it on? Because we don't know you. We don't know. We've been in here for the last. Yes. See, I even tell him, can we get the mask on? And he says, we've been here for a long time, uh, so don't even uh, put it on. So obviously. Uh, their concern is not my mother's health or my health or my health. Their concern is money for kidnapping and terrorizing her so she can be harassed out of her uh, government subsidized Section 8 apartment here in 44 Central Street, apartment 2 Pia St. Peter in Waterbury, Connecticut. <laughs> So she's explaining to the police officer that she's homebound and they have to give her a telehealth appointment, not an in-person appointment. So I'm going to uh, see if, let me see, uh, if this can be a little longer uh, or let me just start a new tape. We left it here when she puts the mask on. Let's continue.